I'm Sarah Backhouse for Hub Culture. I'm now joined by Paul Odili. He's the project manager for the Green Economic Initiative of Delta State in Nigeria. Welcome, Paul. Thank you very much. First of all, tell me a bit about Delta State for those people who aren't familiar with it. Okay, Delta State is uh, one of the taxi states in Nigeria. It's also one of the, and this is very important, uh, for people who may have heard of Niger Delta without knowing that there's a region in Nigeria called Niger Delta, which Delta State is just one of the nine states that make up um, that region. Um, we are a population of 4 million people, land area of uh, 17,000 kilometers. We have a um, coastal line of 120 kilometers. So that, that basically is um, Delta State. All, uh, it, well, uh, in addition to that, potentially we produce 40% of Nigerian crude oil export, which is 2. Point, Nigeria produces 2.3 million uh, uh, barrels of crude oil a day. We potentially produce, should produce, well, that hasn't been happening for some time for all kinds of reasons, but potentially we should produce 40% of that uh, crude oil uh, for the country. So there's a great deal of oil deposit and oil activity going on in that state. Okay. And is that where the green initiatives come in? With yeah, dealing that's, with that's, oil? We, we, see, the, the thing is, um, one of the unfortunate fallouts of oil exploration in the last 50 years in Delta State is that it has really devastated the environment. It has impoverished our people. It has uh, destroyed our ecosystem uh, on account of oil spill. You know, oil companies have all these arguments about, um, you know, we have questions about the uh, asset integrity uh, or, uh, management of the oil companies. There's issues about um, best available technology of the oil companies, which we don't think they are deploying. There is issues about um, third party interference in the oil infrastructure. All of these have been arguments back and forth. But the thing is, the danger in all of that is somehow it has, whether by negligence or by deliberate act, has led to the devastation of the environment. So that today, um, most of our people who ordinarily are used to depend on the, on the land uh, or, or fishing and farming, which they are mostly, have lost out on that. Mm. So there is a great deal of social dislocation and economic impoverishment. And that has led to a lot of crisis. Uh, so the key for us really is to see how we can restore the environment back to the people. We need to repopulate the river, we need to regenerate the soil uh, so that people can feed and engage in meaningful economic that they've known all through their life. For generations we've been uh, farmers and fishermen. Now this is an opportunity for us to, to, um, to do that. And the way to do it for us is by going green. Uh, to really, one of the practical steps we've taken is to um, Commission a report, uh, a data state assessment and restoration project report. Uh, we just recently received a scoping mission report, which we are reviewing. As soon as that is done, then we can take it further. Ultimately, we should develop a project plan towards you know, implementing that, that action. So given that the oil is something that you're not going to give up, presumably you're going to continue exploring, in what ways can you help these local people who have been displaced? Yeah, okay, well, uh, just to return to part of really what our assessment report would advise us on, which it hopes to, is to also for, stop for that spillages. Okay. Uh, there has to be an enforcement of, uh, for enforcement of compliance. Yes. Uh, so that oil companies, uh, even if they are doing their job or their work, would also be very mindful of the environment. That's one leg of what we expect to achieve in the long term. Uh, but in the meantime, part of our short-term uh, strategy is to find a way to move our people into renewable options. Uh, part of what we try to do is to create opportunities for them to go solar, to use solar energy as an alternative means of uh, uh, you know, addressing their energy needs, especially domestic energy needs, um, which is what we started doing. Um, in Delta State, quite a number of those activities are going on now. Uh, one of the immediate plans we intend to execute next year is to send some of our community women to India, uh, Barefoot College in India, to become solar engineers. Uh, the idea is that if we equip them with that skill, they can come back and use it as an option in terms of um, you know, uh, driving the, the alternative option of you know, uh, derived from solar uh, to service their domestic energy needs. That's one of the steps we're taking towards that. Well, renewable energies really is uh, a great future. So. Yes, it is indeed. Yes. We see that as the energy of the future, yeah. really. Absolutely. Um, well, Paul Odili, thank you very much for your time today. We wish you the best of luck and for Delta State. So thank, thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me.